Good morning, Fargo. My name is Tony Gehrig, Fargo City Commissioner, and this is your update for the January 30th uh, meeting that we had on Monday. I'm a little bit behind on the, the videos, so I'll try to catch up this week. Uh, at this meeting, we had a few things uh, of note. We had a Renaissance Zone exemption. We had a resolution of necessity, and I'll explain that further. And we also had Lettergate, which I'm sure you've all seen in the paper, uh, at least on the editorial page of the Fargo Forum. Uh, beginning with the Renaissance Zone exemption, uh, this is an exemption for what was uh, commonly referred to as the horse stable uh, there uh, by the new grocery store downtown. Uh, it's a $25,000 exemption over five years. Uh, I contend, as, as always, that uh, these projects will ha would happen without the incentive. Uh, $25,000 uh, is a half million dollar project. Um, I don't think that uh, this would have changed anything. It would have carried forward regardless. And of course, we're still having our debate on uh, what the proper use for these incentives are here in Fargo and at the local level. It was a four to one vote. I being the only one voted against it. The resolution of necessity, uh, basically what this is, is on 32nd Avenue South um, by Innovis, uh, by Alaris, the bank down there, and then towards Interstate. You have a bike path that's off the road, so it's a path, not a lane, uh, and it runs, you know, from the river all the way across the city of Fargo. Uh, so what we needed to do here was uh, ask 17 or 16 maybe business owners to give up part of their parking lots uh, so that we could run this bike path. We needed to make, basically make the, the uh, sidewalk wider. Uh, we're also doing utilities and, and things like that underneath it. So what I asked was, are we trying to take these people's land uh, based solely on the bike path being wider? And uh, you know, for me, that doesn't necessitate taking someone's land through eminent domain. Uh, most, the vast majority of people, uh, business owners, property owners, said, okay, well, I'll work with the city and I'll give that up for a fair price and help me uh, make myself whole uh, as far as being able to park my vehicles and things like that. Uh, but one business owner did not. Uh, and so we're going to take this person eminent domain and try to take their land from them. This goes to property rights. Uh, this goes to, is it necessary? Now, we can have an argument about the necessity or the value of bike lanes and bike paths. I for one am a proponent of bike paths and not bike lanes. Uh, but do we need to take someone's land in order to do it? Uh, is it that necessary? And I didn't see uh, that, that we should pass a resolution of necessity. Uh, it, it, to me, we can carry on as the city of Fargo and have utilities and have all the things that we need as a city and uh, not take this person's land. So I voted no. It was a four to one vote. Lettergate. You may have seen the Fargo Forum uh, where they called me a liar. Uh, they said that I misled the city commission. Uh, I sent a letter uh, to the uh, legislators out in Bismarck uh, for their committees. Uh, this is the letter itself. Uh, you can see it has the city of Fargo here and our letterhead there. Folks, this is the only letterhead that we have. There is no letterhead that says from the office of Tony Gehrig. I wish that there was, and I think going forward there will be. But every time a commissioner sends out a press release, for example, the mayor sent out a press release with our letterhead, see, right up there. Uh, all the other commissioners have done it. We've sent out letterheads to, uh, or uh, news releases together. We've done it individually. And when we do these, we represent ourselves. We don't represent the entire city of Fargo. We don't represent uh, the entire commission as a whole. We sign our name at the bottom there, and uh, we make an official stance. Anytime I write a letter to a, to someone who wrote me, like a private citizen here in Fargo, if I write a letter to a business, if I write a letter to the other commissioners, if I write a press release, or in this case, if I write an opinion uh, based on incentives uh, to the legislature, I would use this letterhead. So it was, it was told to me that I shouldn't be using the letterhead, despite the fact that all the other ones, all the other commissioners do. Uh, now, you, we can agree or disagree on what that is, but that is our standard here. That's what we do. Uh, as long as I'm not trying to say that I represent the entire city of Fargo or the entire Fargo City Commission. In fact, the first uh, line of this note was as follows. While this letter does not represent the official stance of the, of the Fargo or Bismarck City Commission, it does represent the stance of two commissioners from the largest state, uh, cities in the state. Me and Steve Markward drafted this together. Uh, so uh, there was a, something of a, a pushback. A couple of commissioners didn't like that I did this, uh, but at the same time that I wrote a letter, and in fact it was an email, it wasn't even a letter, it cost absolutely nothing to do, I, sent, I pushed a button and it was sent. Um, at the same time, we had other commissioners go in person using city dollars, city cars, uh, city credit cards, uh, to go out and lobby against my position uh, of, for incentives. It was represented by this commissioner that we, uh, that all the commissioners agreed that he was representing the entire city of Fargo and the entire Fargo City Commission. 
We never took that vote, despite the fact that I asked to take that vote. Uh, on the January 17th, uh, or, uh, 17th meeting, I asked that we uh, take a vote to see what our position was. It died for lack of second. No one offered a, a different vote, and yet we were represented as a whole. Here's, here's what's going to come out of this. We're going to have uh, a draft of, of what we as commissioners should be doing. And on this, I'm going to propose that unless there is a 5-0 vote, no commissioner speaks for the entire city commission. If it's a 4-1 vote, you can speak for the majority, and I can speak for the minority or whomever that is. If it's a 3-2 vote, same thing. And the commissioners have the right to advocate for our, our uh, citizens. Uh, there's no question there. We all do it. It's something that is expected of us. I expect uh, people of the city of Fargo want me to speak my mind the same way they want John Strand or the mayor or Dave or anybody else to do the same. Uh, so to call me on the carpet, to call me a liar by the Fargo Forum to do that, uh, to say that I'm doing something underhanded or different uh, is, is complete garbage. Uh, I did something that we have all done uh, using the letterhead, and I offered my opinion as I was elected to do. Uh, so hopefully it's something good will come out of this, uh, but what really came out of this was that we are now having a better discussion about incentives in, in, in Grand Fork, or excuse me, in, in Bismarck and here in the city of Fargo, and I think that that will be a good thing overall. So leave your comments. Uh, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, by all means, uh, look at the other videos that I've made. Um, and as always, watch how us commissioners are trying to spend your dollars. Thank you.